Hey there, welcome back to Semtech channel. In power system, there is a concept of long transmission line, short transmission line, or medium transmission line. In this tutorial, we're going to analyze a short transmission line and also draw its phase diagram. So if you want to get comfortable with this type of analysis, stay tuned until the end of this tutorial. Now, what do we call this a uh, short transmission line? Now, this is specifically important for voltage regulation. So if you want to run a voltage regulation at the side of the circuit, which is the receiving end of the circuit, well, you have to take account of the capacitive current because that will create some voltage drop. But in a short transmission line, uh, something around 10 to 15 kilometers, the capacitive current can be considered negligible for line regulation calculation but if you are dealing with long to medium transmission line you have to consider capacitive current but remember this only applies to overhead transmission line okay so if you are dealing with underground systems remember uh, the long short medium they do not apply there because there the cables are going to be too close to each other that you have to consider the capacitance that going to build up around the bundles cable as can be seen here on the normal overhead transmission line the line spacing between the cable here can go up to one meters of spacing but this is not the case in the underground the cables are going to be bundled together very tightly close together and in that situation the capacitance are going to be much higher so you cannot do an analysis the same way we do for overhead transmission line now before we can draw the phasor diagram of these uh, short transmission line equivalent circuit we need to define the parameters for these diagram here so the first parameter is the sending end voltage known as v send which has an angle of theta send and this voltage will basically induce the current into this transmission line and that is i send now we've got line parameters so we've got the resistance and we've got the reactance basically the inductance xl will that will induce a reactance here and this combo here r and xl will basically induce the impedance of the line so that will be zl and zl will have an angle theta that can be calculated now moving on we've got a receiving end voltage now the receiving end voltage will be sitting right here at this point okay so this is where the receiving end will be sitting just before the circuit breaker is closed so once we close the circuit breaker then we're going to attach the load on the receiving end of the circuit by the way if you want to know more about overhead line uh, parameters calculation like resistance of an overhead line capacitance and inductance for overhead line transmission line please watch the tutorial series on overhead line parameters calculations i've got tutorial one two three that speaks uh, about these parameters you're going to uh, learn a great deal of insight of this topic the tutorial links are on the description box please make sure you watch those but now this load here have an angle and this angle will carry a sign depending on the type of load now first off if it's a resistive load which we're going to draw a phasor diagram just now this load is this angle is basically going to be zero degree and if it's a purely inductive load uh, then you're going to have a load impedance of plus 90 degree and negative 90 degree for a purely capacitive load but also as soon as the circuit breaker is closed there will be a current that will flow here now this current is the load current which basically is il okay and il will have an angle as well which will be plus minus theta l now the sign for this angle will also be dependent on the type of load you're going to be having here if this load here is purely capacitive that means the current will lead the voltage by 90 degree in that case you're going to have a positive angle here for the current and inversely if the load is purely inductive uh, meaning the current lags the voltage uh, by 90 degrees so you're going to have 
a negative angle of the current so that is what you need to keep uh, in mind while analyzing this type of circuit and also do keep in mind that in a short transmission or in a transmission line uh, as we analyzing here the sending end current will be equal to the receiving end current now we are assuming that we don't have a transformer in between our transmission line here we basically just have a transmission line okay in that case the current from the sending end i sent must then be equal to the current from the receiving end because you are just dealing with a series circuit here so you're going to have i send uh, must be equal to i receive okay but bear in mind that this only applies to the magnitude of the current so in case uh, you get a problem that they try to trick you they give you um an angle for this current here you cannot equate that to this angle okay so this angle here depend on the type of loads that you have here at the receiving end whether it's purely resistive capacitive or inductive or a mix of all that then it's going to define this angle here and that cannot be equated to the angle from the sending and if there is any okay so now having said that since we've now defined all the parameters that we need for this uh, short transmission line we can then go ahead and draw the phaser diagram for the equivalent circuit here with a resistive load so let's emphasize that the phaser diagram we're going to draw will be for a resistive load so we assume that the load here is purely resistive okay so this is for a resistive load now before we can actually proceed with the phaser diagram there are two important elements of the phaser diagram that we missed uh, they are the voltage drop uh, across the transmission line so we've got r and we've got xr so we know that the voltage drop here will be vr and also on xl here we're also going to have a voltage drop as vl that will have a 90 degree angle and vr will have a zero degree angle and together these combo here are basically going to be vz okay so that basically the total voltage drop across a transmission line that will be vr plus vl and these will have an angle uh, that we can calculate okay while you are working this type of problem so now we are actually ready because now we've got all the parameters we need to draw the phaser diagram to draw your phaser diagram you first need to draw the reference voltage which is v at the receiving end with an angle of zero degree right before the circuit breaker is closed okay so from the origin you're going to draw your v rank so this is going to be v rank basically the voltage at the receiving end then since the current is basically going to be in phase with the voltage because this is a resistive load then you're going to draw your current basically in phase with v reg so this here will be your i l phaser great now the next thing to do here is the voltage drops you now need to deal with the voltage drop so the first one is vr now this voltage drop is caused by the sending end current that crosses this resistance okay which is equal to the receiving end current so which means since r is purely resistive so vr is also going to be in phase with your receiving end voltage okay so that will be your vr so this here is going to be vr now you need to draw the voltage drop through the inductor okay on the transmission line now this voltage drop is going to be perpendicular to your vr or to the v reg because it is 90 degree out of phase so you're going to draw from the origin uh, here from the origin here you're going to draw your vl great so this is now your vl great now by the way if you find this tutorial useful please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel that will be highly appreciated this is a resistive uh, load phaser diagram 
there will be a capacitive and inductive load phaser diagram for the short transmission line as well so please make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss those tutorial okay so we move on here what are we going to do next so we've got our vl we got vr so the next thing here is to get vz but as you can see vz have a particular angle here that is theta z and also this vl here have an angle right unlike the vr that got zero angle it's basically in phase with the receiving end voltage vl have a 90 degree angle so we're going to go ahead and place that angle now we can draw vz based on the calculation of vr plus vl we can then deduce the angle of vz so let's go ahead and place the angle of vz okay so there is the angle of vz so this angle here is basically going to be theta z now once we know what is theta z we can then from the origin based on the value of vz that we found on scale right we assume we are drawing all of these phases on scale we can go ahead and place our vz okay so this is so thus here is v z with an angle theta z great now that we've got a uh, v z uh, drawn on our phaser diagram here the next thing is we just need to draw the v sending okay now we know that uh, through the working of this equivalent circuit v sending here is going to be greater than the v receiving and why because there will be a voltage drop across a transmission line so if we send 132 kilovolt we only going to receive let's say 131.5 kilovolt we're going to have a couple of hundreds of volt that's going to uh, drop across r and xl and that is represented by vz okay that we already draw here how do we then draw the v sending now since v sending according to kirchhoff voltage law is going to be vz plus v receiving so we need to project the vz vz must be projected at the top of v receiving so that we can then do uh, phaser combinations of this segment of vz must then be combined with the v receiving to give us v sending that basically what we need to do here great so let us now uh, project uh, the voltage across the transmission line to the top of v receiving end okay great so now you can see that if we now draw because now we know that we can calculate v sending n by adding vz plus vr that will also give us the angle of v sending so if we know what the angle of v sending we can basically draw it so that we can know exactly uh, from the origin where is v sending standing okay so let's go ahead and place that angle okay so this is going to be the v sending angle we can go ahead and place theta sending right here okay so this is theta sending the angle of the sending voltage now we can draw from the origin v sending great so this is it guys how you can draw uh, a phaser diagram for a resistive load right for a short transmission line okay with your impedance parameters so make sure you join me uh, next time uh, in this tutorial number two because this is tutorial one overhead line steady state operation so in tutorial two we are going to draw the phaser diagram for inductive uh, load right for a purely inductive load and we're going to finish off with a phaser diagram for a capacitive load so please make sure you tune in so you can see this here is going to be much different for a capacitive load because now we're not going to have the current in phase with the receiving end because here il is in phase because it's a resistive load 
but for a capacitive or resistive load this current will be either lagging or leading the voltage so please make sure you tune in for that particular tutorial until next time cheers